Hey guys, welcome to Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh, and sitting next to me is the founder of CXC Simulations, Chris Considine. Now, I was able to visit Los Angeles for the weekend, and Chris allowed me to visit the facility, and I decided to sit him down for a quick interview. So Chris, thank you for having me. Hey, it's my pleasure. Yeah, so one question I had was, how did this all come to be? How did you start CXC and when did you do that? Wow, how much time you have? <laughs> um, he, well, I, this was really born from a need. Uh, I started racing at a very early age, um, you know, like most that want to make racing a profession. Um, so, you know, I worked my way up the racing ladder and, and as I did so, um, I started to realize that testing was getting really, really, really expensive. You know, um, I, I get the analogy that I use is if you want to be a professional football player, or basketball player, you know, and you, you have to practice to get better, right? Well, if you want to do one of those, go down to the park, practice as much as you like. You know, it doesn't cost you any money, it just costs you time and sweat. Right. But if you want to be a race car driver, you got to practice in a race car. And that is horrendously expensive. And as you get up the racing ladder, uh, that gets even more expensive. And I remember when I got up to Formula Mazda, the test days were, you know, ten, eleven thousand dollars a day. Um, and of course, there's no substitute for practice. Right. So the more seat time you get, the better you get. Um, and when you don't have a lot of personal wealth, <laughs> you know, you have to go get that money yourself and it's hard you know and it's definitely hard when you don't uh aren't able to get sponsorship in the lower series because you just don't have exposure you know because you're in a lower series so it's a bit of a chicken and the egg kind of scenario um and at the time i was working at the bondurant racing school and i was really thinking about okay well how can i maximize my practice time and um I played racing games at the time, but you know, something they were always lacking was the correct seating position, the correct feel, the right, you know, controls, basically the hardware element. You know, there was nothing I could do about the software, but the hardware, it could definitely affect that. Um, so I built myself, you know, a training tool essentially. And you know, the very early ones were really crude. Um, but over time, I started to perfect it and really obsess over it. And um, my coaching clients, you know, got wind of it and, you know, asked me to build them a couple. And eventually I turned it into a business. Now, that's the real short version, obviously, <laughs> but, but that's the gist of it. <laughs> you know. All right. And so one thing I heard was that you started all of this in your garage. You... <laughs> basically brought this from the ground up. So I'm going to go out on a whim and assume that these early uh, CXC simulation cockpits, they didn't have motion, they didn't have direct drive. So what would you say the first cockpits, like rigs, they consisted of? Well, so, I mean, you really have to delineate, right? So, I mean, my personal prototypes that I drove myself, yeah, the first ones didn't have motion. They were just like a basic frame, you know, to get first. My first goal was get in the right seating position. You know, in a Formula Mazda car, your legs are above your butt, essentially, right? Yeah. So you're laying down. Um, so I built myself a frame where I was laying down, you know, and then I would, you know, position. I think at the time I had like a Microsoft Force Feedback steering wheel. Like the original one. Um, so I'd prop that up and I put the pedals up. And then I was like, yeah, you know, the pedals could be better, like a brake feel especially. So I made my own, uh, and this was all before the like, you know, big hardware revolution, I would say. Um, I made my own like pedal pressure feel thing. It was like, I think it was, the first couple were like a rubber bushing that I just stuck inside the pedals to make them feel better. And then later I saw, Nixum made one just like that I had done for myself. And again, these were just for myself. I never had any other intention other than to use it to train, you know, learn tracks and just, you know, practice my art. Um, so, yeah, but the first ones that 
then fast forward years later, the first ones that I built for other people were motion simulators. The, okay. the first batch were motion simulators. And honestly, that had more to do with the fact that like when someone started paying me to build something, I could afford to bi build a better simulator. When it was just for myself and with my own money, I couldn't afford to do that kind of stuff. Right. So, you know, it was, I was lucky in the sense that um, my clients... My first couple clients really trusted me, you know, to make something for them that was cool and helped fund essentially the beginning of the company that way. Um, and just by purchasing the first few prototypes. And yes, it did start in a garage. In fact, it started in less than a garage. It was a shed that I had built in my backyard. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, just like Apple and HP, you know, we have, we have the shed or garage story. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not that I'm comparing myself to like giants like those guys, but hey, you know what? Maybe one day. Wouldn't that be yeah. nice? <laughs> so uh, you are largely appealing to the corporate and the race teams for training. And like, for example, you do sell the cockpits, but what other services do you offer for racers? So nowadays we're really a solutions provider, right? And that's a fancy name for saying that we are hardware, software, and service all at once, right? So we pride ourselves on delivering turnkey solutions to our clients. Um, our clients range from professional race car drivers and teams that are using them as a training tool to we have clients that are just use them for entertainment, you know, big boy toy guys, you know, uh, that just have to have the ultimate thing for their man cave, you know? Um, to now commercial clients as well. They're using them either for promotional purposes, like you know, clients like Ferrari and McLaren and things like that that are using them to promote their other products, uh, or simulation centers, which operate a lot like uh, indoor go-kart centers, only with 10 to 20 simulators linked together racing against each other for public use. All right. And have you ever considered the idea of entering the commercial element? Because... If I remember correctly, you develop your own direct drive wheel, you develop your own pedals. So have you ever considered selling those on a consumer level? You know, it gets brought up all the time. Um, I get, you know, one of the things, it, it really comes down to being selfish, right? So as an engineer, um, I am always interested in designing the best and the best for me is no compromise and no compromise comes at a pretty high cost but it also means deep integration right so for example a direct drive steering system our direct drive steering system wouldn't work without our motion control systems or other things along with it right because it's designed to fit seamlessly with the rest of the simulator uh, not just for support and physical reasons but because they're designed to work together and complement each other. Uh, and removing that would mean a compromise. Then making it appealing price-wise to a larger market would mean more compromises. You know? And once you start making compromises like that, it's it's no longer the best I can do. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, right. it's the best I can do within this little box, you know? And I enjoy personally just going crazy, you know? Um, I remember we were doing some work in the Formula One in, uh, industry and I was talking to some F1 engineers that we were doing some work with and they basically said the same thing. Like, hey, we used to be an engineer at a car company, but... You know, and that was fun and all that. But once we got to Formula One and the handcuffs were removed and it's like, do anything you want. It's amazing what you can accomplish when there are no roadblocks like that, engineering wise. So, and that's, that's kind of how I feel in the simulation industry. You know, we're at the top and we can do anything we want, you know, because our clients expect that of us. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So I think the last question I would have is... What is your personal favorite title as of right now? What is the one that you would see yourself just racing for fun? So to me, I guess I get asked that all the time. I like all of them. And 
it's because I drive the one I want when the mood suits me. You know, when I really want to be super racy and race online with some other people who are super racy and a car and track strike me that, that they have, then I racing is it, right? But when I want to sit down and I want to play for fun and I want to invite friends who, you know, aren't super racy but just want to have a good time, then, you know, sometimes Project Cars is, is the best bet there. Um, you know, it just depends on what you want to do. If I, you know, if I want to drive a rally car, you know, dirt. <laughs> you know, I mean, it really just if, and I and I got I can jump all over the map, and that's why I think it's so awesome that we have so many choices now, um, that you don't have to have one. You know, favorite. Uh, you can have a lot of favorites. <laughs> you know, so it, I think the better question is, what do I play? Um, and for me, I play iRacing, I play a set of Corsa, I play Dirt, and I play Project Cars. And on the flight side, I fly X-Plane when I want to be more serious and train, because I'm a private pilot as well. Um, and when I want to just have some fun and blow some stuff up, I play DCS, Digital Combat Simulator. All right. Well, I think that'll do it for us, but... I want to thank you again yeah, for hey, taking pleasure. the time Thanks and for thank me. you for hosting me at yeah. CXE. And I hope you like this interview. And for Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh and this is Chris.